Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Sport, and today's show is presented by Panda Sups. If you guys are looking to get an awesome deal, you got to get your hands on the greens because for this week and this week only, 50% off. Use code just greens baby at pandasups.com. So what's going to be coming up here on the show? We're going to be looking at training camp because, hey, it's finally starting today for UDFAs, rookies, and quarterbacks. Kenyon Drake got some injury news on the running back, but if you follow me on social media on Locals, you kind of already know what happened last Friday. Raiders offensive line rumors from Vic Tafer, pretty interesting stuff. And then a Raiders insider has linked Indomitian Sue to the silver and black. Now, y'all, I love news. I love rumors. But finally, training camp is here and I'm excited to get some real information from actual coaches like Josh McDaniels. I want to get some stuff from Dave Ziegler. I want to hear and see what Derek Carr thinks of the new offense and everything going around and on July 20th is when all the veterans, some of those older players will report and we will make sure that we can keep you up to date on all of that. To make sure you never miss anything going on around the silver and black, I want you to subscribe to the Raiders Report. Scan that QR code right there. I need 30 more subs to get to 115,000 subscribers. There's a reason why we're the number one most watched Raiders channel on YouTube. We're dedicated. So hit that sub button to make sure you're stayed up to date. So let's talk about Kenyon Drake and this injury update here. He's expected to be ready for week one. And if you ask, wait, who's the source? It's Kenyon Drake. He said that he fully expects to be ready to rock and roll up against the Raiders week one against the Chargers. Now, for those of you that don't remember, it was a heartbreaking moment. I remember I was doing my watch party. He got carted off the field, broken ankle December 5th, and I remember being like, man, I don't know what's going to be the future for Drake. So it does sound like he has a chance to play in the preseason. He's going to do some light work in the training camp room. This is what Drake had to say in a recent interview. I am definitely going to be ready for camp. It's not going to be full speed ahead once I get into camp. But for the regular season, I'm definitely ready to go. Well, Kenyon Drake's ready for the regular season. I don't know about you all. I'm ready for the regular season, too. And I'm already counting down the days. 55. 55 days. Chandler Jones amount of days until the Raiders take on the Chargers. Remember that old song? 55. As my voice cracks, I can't do it. But <laughs> everyone in the background's laughing at me. I don't know about y'all, though. I'm ready for some Raiders football. And let's take on the Chargers. If you want, spam in the comments right now, F-L-A-C, because I am ready to take down Justin Herbert. I'm ready to take down Keenan Allen. Ready to say F you Khalil Mack, F you Joey Bosa. Raiders are coming to town. Let's keep on rocking and rolling, though, with this Kenyon Drake quote. A couple of preseason games are, however... I feel need to kind of get back into football shape. But really, I'm excited about the opportunity to kind of get back on the field. I haven't hurt for the majority of seven months now. So I feel great just working through the things that you usually go through when you're coming off a major injury and just ready to kind of get back on the field. It's not my first rodeo. So if you are trying to see him play in the preseason, I don't really anticipate him being there for August 4th in the Hall of Fame game against the Jags. At least I personally wouldn't rush it. Usually when you go back and you look at some teams when you had four preseason games, a lot of the major players would play in the second game or the third game. Those are the two weeks that I'm going to look ahead and say, all right, maybe there's a chance you see Kenyon, but who knows? I mean, the Raiders just announced that they're going to have joint practice with the New England Patriots following or leading up to their game on the 26th. I believe it starts on the 23rd. I hope to see Drake out there, but I also don't want to put him in a position where he's not 100% ready. Why? Because I have a lot of confidence in the Raiders' running back depth chart. You know Josh is going to be your number one. Drake right now is slotted as the number two dude who played a little bit of special teams last season, can catch the football, run between the tackles, but obviously the Raiders added Zamir White. You have Jacob Johnson. Brandon Bolden can also catch the football a little bit. You also drafted Britton Brown, so I am hoping that you see more of these other backs not featured in terms of pictures in the preseason. What also makes this very interesting with Kenyon Drake is his cap hit because when the Raiders signed him, thanks Gruden, two years, 14 mil, I sat up here and I told you all, it's, it's not going to be a good deal because you shouldn't pay a running back, especially your second back, that much money. So the Raiders restructured Drake's contract. And what you see right here are a bunch of void years. Essentially, well, 
you have to pay him, but if you cut him, you're going to end up making or you're going to end up losing a lot of money here. Four void years is a lot of void years for running backs, so that's why I get asked a lot of times, do you think the Raiders could potentially move on from Kenyon Drake? Potentially, if you were to ask me right now, the top two teams to try to trade for Drake, I'd say the Baltimore Ravens with the J.K. Dobbins news that came out today. I'd also throw out the New Orleans Saints because of the Alvin Kamara suspension that is looming. So let's talk about the Raiders running back room. I want you to be Josh McDaniels. I want you to be Dave Ziegler. Who do you think? Look into that crystal ball. Be the Raiders running back coach, Kennedy Palomalu. Who will be the RB2? When, it, when I say RB2, I mean which back do you believe is going to get the second most touches behind Jacobs? If you think it's Drake, type 23, Zamir White, 35, or Brandon Bolden, type 34. My money is still going to go on Kenyon Drake as being that top RB2. But remember, it's going to be a running back by committee. So let's just say Jacobs gets the majority. Then I think it's Drake. And then I think it's Brandon Bolden. And I think it's Zamir White. It's going to be a very, very close battle. Now, at the top of the show, I hinted at the idea that, dude, we've already talked about this. But yet, you got places like NFL, Yahoo, CBS, they're acting like this is breaking news. If you're a supporter over on Locals, dude, I talked about this live with y'all on Friday. It's a reason why you should join our community. It's free to join the community. It's free to watch that show. But if you want even more exclusive videos, even more insider information, you can become a supporter for $10 a month, $100 a year. And for most of the people that have already seen this, you're like, yeah, I follow you on Locals. That's why. That's why you should do it. We get you the information. Coming up next here on the Raiders Report, we're going to look at the offensive line projections from Vic Tafer because I went through an article that he released this morning, and one of the things he said about the offensive line, I'm not going to lie to you all, it was uh, – Pretty eye-popping. Now, we know Colt Miller is going to be the left tackle, but then what are some of these other positions? We're going to get into all of them. So the first thing that we're going to talk about here is Denzel Gooden. Is he going to be the starting right guard for the silver and black? Man, I'm going to give this one two just win, baby heads, and I think it's a coin flip at this point. According to Tafer, he says that Good is the favorite to start at right guard. He's close to 100% coming off that ACL injury he sustained in week one. I know that Good can play left guard. I know he can also play right tackle. Now, when I follow a lot of the reports, when I listen to some of the players that you know I've talked to in the past, I am a big believer that the Raiders are going to go with the five best linemen. If that means that Denzel Good is one of the linemen and at right guard, then that's fine. The issue is I'm a believer, and this is just my thought process, if let's just say the Raiders' overall offensive line is better with good as a left guard, then maybe that's the route they go. You're going to see a lot of dominoes fall for the simple fact of there's so many question marks around the Raiders' offensive line unit. Now, the reason why I'm talking about this because this is what Vic Tafer had to say on the Raiders' offensive line. The only sure bets here are Colt Miller, at left tackle, and Denzel Good, assuming he has recovered from last season's torn ACL at right guard. The other three jobs are up for grabs. So you got Colt Miller at left tackle, Denzel Good at right guard. He's essentially saying that right tackle, who knows, center, up for grabs, left guard, up for grabs, and I'm not totally shocked around that. However, I do think that right guard could also potentially be up for grabs. But you know what the Raiders report's all about? It's about the interaction, and I want to rely on y'all's passion because I'm a passionate dude, and I always say this. I don't like talking to myself. I know, call me crazy, but it's very important when I ask you a question, I can get a feel what y'all are thinking, and then I can do other shows. We can do other segments. I can get a feel for the nation. What would be your one-word reaction if week one against the Chargers, Denzel Good walks out there and lines up as the starting right guard? The next story coming up here on the Raiders Report, guess what, man? We got more offensive line rumors. We're going to be talking about the right side of the line, but today's show presented by our good friends, Panda Sups. And I want you to try the Greens products because for this week and this week only, we have a special deal. Use code, which you can see down on your screen below, Just Greens Baby for 50% off at pandasups.com. And for whatever reason you can't find 
that link. It's available for you in the comments and in the description. If you're wondering, Mitch, what are some of the greens benefits? Your joints, it's healthier for them. Brain and health, you got you covered. Immune system, Jack Water A, maybe you should take some. If you're looking for extra, I don't know, just honestly greens in your diet because you don't like vegetables. Antioxidants, it helps your gut health. You're going to get extra boost. I take a scoop of this stuff every single morning. And for you people who don't like coffee, I challenge you, take a scoop of that. You're going to be waking up, you're going to be feeling good, and you're going to have a help, happier and healthier lifestyle. All right, let's keep on with these Vic Tafer quote graphics rolling on in here. The third round pick, Dylan Parham, worked at guard and center during OTAs that could push John Simpson at left guard and Andre James at center. Parham has really positioned himself as the top interior backup but he'll be vying for more. At right tackle, it's a two-way battle between Alex Leatherwood and Brandon Parker. Leatherwood seemed to take the lead on Parker during OTAs, but the Raiders could practice in pads, and then it's impossible to fully evaluate blocking without real contact. I 100% agree with that statement, and I, I admit that the Raiders have Alex Leatherwood as the upper hand right now. But we know that doesn't always mean it's going to work out that way. So who do you believe is going to start at right tackle? If you're going to go with Leatherwood, type 70. If you're going to go with Brandon Parker, though, I want you to type 75 down in the comments. My answer, I'm going to go with Alex Leatherwood because I do think he's a lot more talented than Brandon Parker. And also, Carmen Rosillo, the Raiders offensive line team, the Raiders head coaching staff. I mean, they want Brandon, uh, they want, excuse me, Alex Leatherwood to take this job. And if he does take this job, then that's where you're going to see some other dominoes fall for right guard, center, and left guard. The final story here around today's show is going to be on Indomitian Sioux. And is he going to be in with the Raiders? I mean, man, we've been talking about this for weeks at this point. And I have to just give it two just win babies. Man, I don't know. Flip a coin, heads or tails, call it in the air. But the fact that I think it's two just win babies, I actually think is good news. Because Tafer today admitted that, or I should say, mentioned overall and Dominican Sue being linked to the team. So in a in the article, Tafer, you know, has asked, what about adding a defensive tackle? He said, why not? They already have nine defensive tackles on the roster, but they still lacking in one area, interior pass rush. Nichols is the only defensive tackle on the roster who's had at least three sacks in 2021. Plus, he's posted only 11 career sacks across four seasons with the Bears. And you know that I'm not too big on the Raiders defensive line group, at least their interior guys. You know, I love Chandler Jones. I love me some Max Crosby. I'm hoping Nichols and Hankins can be healthy, but there's a lot of inexperience here. So I'm not surprised that Tafer mentioned Ndamukong Sue, and he did. This is exactly what he said. Ndamukong Sue is far removed from his prime, but he has registered six sacks in back-to-back -back seasons and is still an effective player. The Raiders have over $21 million in cap space, according to Over the Cap, so money shouldn't be an issue when it comes to bringing him on a one-year deal. Several public Applications have reported that the Raiders are one of the teams with interest in Sue. They have an open roster spot after waving cornerback Stanford Samuels III earlier this month. So they have room to bring in the future Hall of Famer to Las Vegas if a deal materializes. Now this is just an FYI for some of you. You already know. If the Raiders sign Sue... I'm going live, hell, I might even shave my face and rock a Fu Man and Domican Sue. So if you made it this far in the video... I want you to spam Sue. I want a Dominican here. I want this football team to be better because right now, they are a playoff caliber team. You had a few of these other players like Ndamukong Sue, maybe somebody on the offensive line, maybe another defensive player or two, then that takes you to the extra level to be a Super Bowl contender. Now, before I wrap up today's show, the Raiders Report, Chat Sports, man, we continue to grow. And a major shout-out to Pat Seatman because he was uh, the producer behind today's show. And, Pat, you didn't know I was going to do this, so I just want you to swing up here real quick. Swing up here real quick. Yeah. So this is Patrick's very, very first show on the Raiders Report. And because of y'all's dedication, we can hire people. He's a lot taller than me. So, Pat, you might have to squat down a little bit. Everyone, go give Pat a follow on Twitter. Tell him what's up. He's got 15 followers now, so we're going to get that number up. Sue's also bad news. Sue's most likely going to sign with the Vikings. Oh, so he's a Vikings fan. We might have to get him for Raiders versus Vikings watch party. Get him really effed up, and then maybe he'll be a Raider fan. All right, major shout-out to Pat. Major everyone out there who watched this far in the video. And remember, if the Raiders do anything whatsoever, we're going to keep you updated here all season long.